All right, hello everybody. This is Maddie from Madison Mud. How's everybody doing? Um, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a flower bowl. Um, you're going to use the kits that you picked up from the Curbside Clay Projects. Um, so this is a sample that I made last night. It's pretty dry. Just again, make sure when you drop them off that you drop them off wrapped in plastic and I'll show you that at the end of the tutorial. Um, so this is a very easy project to do, but I think it does take a couple extra things around your house. So the one thing I would recommend is have a mold, a bowl of some type. This is a project I did in 2017, so it's three years old. Um, so this is one thing, extra thing that you'll need. Another extra thing that you will need is a um, plastic bag which I'll show you that as well. Um, you have your clay from your clay kit. So this is my clay. Um, so again, same thing. We're gonna make a pinch pot, okay? And we're also gonna make a slab. Um, another thing that you will need is a flower petal tracer. You're gonna make six of these. So you wanna think about a pattern um, that you're going to use for this project as well. Okay, so first things first, you wanna take your clay out of your bag. This is some recycled stuff from a previous class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my hands. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, there we go. And what I'm doing is I'm compacting the clay together. And I'm gonna make a tiny pinch pot and I'll walk you through that as well. This is gonna be the base of your flower um, that all the petals are gonna be attached to. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, so again, you wanna have a ball that's um, almost like a large meatball. You can kind of smooth out any of those imperfections. Again, I'm packing it together. Okay, so this is my ball. Now I am a righty, so I'm putting up my right thumb. I know it's a reverse because you guys are on the left. Um, so I'm holding the clay in my left hand and I'm going to take my right thumb and I'm going to press it in. Okay. So then you get a lollipop on your finger. So my thumb's in the center. All right. And you want to go as deep as you can without going all the way through the clay. And then you're going to use your other four fingers as pinchers. So you're going to pinch the clay turn the clay, pinch the clay, turn the clay. And as you go, the hole in the center is gonna get wider and wider and wider. So keep pinching and turning. Now for this, we wanna create a low bowl, which uh, you will see versus something taller. So just keep that in mind as well. So I'm just pinching and turning. My table's shaking, so I'm gonna do it up here so I'm not shaking the camera too much. Pinching and turning. Pinching and turning. Now the other thing is I'm doing, I'm putting my hands on the inside and this helps. Once the hole is big enough, kind of press it down. And again, this is gonna be the base for your flower, um, your flower project, so just keep that in mind too. All right, so again, you want it to be wide, so the reason why I'm hitting it is as I hit the clay, it's slowly getting shorter. And again, this is gonna be the base. So we don't want it too tall, but we want it to have enough for our flower petals to hold on to. And I'm pinching these wider. You're also gonna notice that the muscles in your forearm are starting to like, wow, that's a weird muscle. So keep that in mind too as you keep going. Okay, now again, if you have these little divots, um, I have some extra tools, again, gift card from Starbucks, old gift card. This is really good for smoothing out clay. Another tool that I like to use from around the house, a wooden spoon, and you can use this. Just kind of hit the clay, and this also helps get the divots out as you're going. Again, all of, most of this is going to get smoothed out later on anyway, so it, we don't have to be so perfect with it, but you want the walls of your clay to be about a width of your pinky, about the quarter of an inch thick, the base and the sides as well. If it's too thick, it can explode in the kiln, and if it's too thin, it's not going to be able to grab onto very well. So that is my pinch pot. Again, I'm just going to put this off to the side. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clay, okay, and I'm gonna roll it out. Now you can either 
roll it out by hand, which I'm going to show you right now, or with the roller or the combination of the two. So first things first, you kind of want to squish the clay. Okay, squishing, 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 patting, 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 and my camera's going to shake as I do this. Again, everything's moving. So you, what's going to happen is I'm throwing it down at a downward angle this way to stretch it out. So we want to make the whole slab the same thickness. Now if you do have a rolling pin available, this is another way to do it. Just make sure that you're rolling away from you and you're not rolling back in. This helps keep air bubbles to a minimum. Alright, so that helps too. You're stretching it out. So again, I have a, it's a little thicker on the inside, so again, I'm rolling it. All right, so now this is my slab. You guys can see that it is um, pretty big. Um, so what I'm going to use now is I'm going to trace this petal six times. So you can do this with a plastic knife. Um, if you have a pin tool, this is another way to do it, so I'll show you um, with a plastic knife also how you can do this. So I just poked it and I'm going to move it. A lot of people like to always start in the middle, um, kids and adults. So you just want to make sure that you're off to the side. Okay, so now I have my plastic knife. So again, I'm holding it down with my left hand and I'm tracing it out with my right. All right, so again, both works pretty good. Um, I'm just used to the pin tool because it's, it, you know, muscle memory. So again, six petals. Now again, this is one pattern. You can use multiple patterns. Flowers come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, so keep that in mind too. Um, I cut this out of cardboard once I decided. Now the other thing, see how it's, it's symmetrical on both sides? So I, fold, I folded the cardboard in half drew the line and then I cut it out this way. So just again whatever works for you at home all of our studios are all different some people have lots of tools some people have no tools and this is the first time they're doing it. Um, it's kind of all up to you. We are currently in my kitchen so this is my new studio. Uh, I think I'm out of room. Alright so one thing is if you run out of room, you can take up all these other pieces. You can kind of see my clay. All right, so that's one, two, I almost got to six, three, four, five. All right, you can take all your extra clay and just kind of squish it back together or wedge it. Wedging is when you take the clay and just kind of press it, and what happens is you're trying to get the air bubbles out. And there's, this is very important when you're reusing clay. The other thing is you're going to notice your clay is going to dry out the more you touch it. So just keep that in mind too as you're working. Um, also make sure anything that you're not using is back wrapped up. So again, what I just did is I took all this extra stuff. So I need one more petal. Hitting it with my wrist. All right, flipping it, flipping it, flipping it, flipping it, flipping it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry my camera's shaking so much. Rolling it out. Again, one technique, both techniques. Hit this guy a little bit, it's all right. All right, so now I'm going to trace my final flower petal. So now I have my six petals. Um, they're imperfect, but just like in nature, things can be imperfect. I have my pinch pot. So what you're going to do first is you're going to attach your three petals on the inside, and then we're going to layer up. But one thing that I also find super handy is having a bowl of some type. It could be plastic. It could be paper. Um, this is just something that I have around 
for clay, so I figured it was good to use. I wrapped it in plastic so it doesn't stick to the mold. So again, this is going to go in here. Just kind of stretching it out a little bit. Okay. So you guys can see I just put that tiny bowl in the big bowl. And the plastic helps as a release agent so you don't have to oil anything or, um, you know, stress that it's sticking to the inside bowl. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip and score. Scratching here. Okay. And then I'm also going to scratch where I'm attaching it to. All right. Now, again, you can use a fork to do this. You can use a pin tool. You can use a knife, whatever works for you. So again, I have my scratch marks here, scratch marks here. In your kits, you also have a jar of goo. This is um, a giant jar of, jar of slip that I've collected since doing all these videos at home. Um, so I'm adding slip to one, and then I'm going to press it in between. So that is my first flower petal. You guys can see. Now I'm going to keep going. And I want you guys to get the downward angle. Um, I'm going to now attach one, three. I'm going to attach the other two. Not totally next to it. Uh, not not exactly touching um, because again flowers there's like different layers of this flower so there's the underneath layer and the top layer so I'm scratching my marks here scratching marks here adding my slip adding my slip and then I'm going to press it into those slip marks and the great thing about having a bowl too is now I get that lip where the flower is opening up Scratch marks here, and then pressing. That's it. So they're not they're not they're equally distant from each other. Okay, they're social distancing. All right. So that is my first layer of flowers. Now the second layer of flowers you're going to put on top of it. All right. So again, think about maybe stretching out that tiny bowl on the inside a little bit. Again, everything's going to get blended out, but um, we want to layer it. So what you're going to do is you're going to scratch your petal, just like we've already done. And then you're going to scratch on the inside. I'm going to show you this in a second. So again, you guys can see my scratches here. So it's going to get scratched here, here, and here. But once it, we also, we need to scratch up, and you'll see why in a second. It makes sense as, as you see it. So I have my scratch marks, I'm going to add my slip, okay, and I'm going to press this into that piece, but again, it's slipping and scoring, got to get the angle, it's slipping and scoring wherever it's attached, so make sure, and you can always go back in once you get all these petals on, um, and really clean it up a little bit, so just make sure that you're slipping and scoring, slipping and scoring, slipping and scoring, and pressing. That's the other thing that people forget to do. So again, I'm slipping and scoring, scratching. You're not going to see any of these scratches because, again, they're going to be on the under layer. Scratching, slipping. All right, and then pressing. Again, that guy's going to go in that spot. As you see, my flower is almost done. And the last petal. So again, I'm slipping and scoring, scratching around the edges where it's going to be attached, scratching, okay, scratching, scratching. All right, and then I'm going to press this into that side. All right, so now what is going to happen? So now my flower bowl is pretty. The, the the base parts are done, but now it's the time for the cleanup. So I like to make it look like my pieces are attached. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to hold it like this, is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to press along the top. Okay. So 
it looks like it's coming out of the center rather than just being placed next to it. So it's all going to get blended together. Another super handy tool is a sponge. Um, so what you do is you can just kind of press the damp sponge, not wet, damp sponge into those marks and that will help kind of smooth everything out too. All right. Um, great tool for texture. As you kind of keep going, you can keep on kind of watching me play with this and perfect it is a very fancy pencil. Um, this very fancy pencil can draw, draw different designs into the flower. Maybe you want it to be more streaky than my first example. Um, but again, just kind of keep playing with the petal design. Playing with the petal design, kind of pressing it. You can draw those lines. If you want to do something like this, ooh, that looks pretty. Um, so think about what you want your flower to look like. Um, it doesn't have to be six petals. Maybe it's going to be five. Um, what color you're also going to make it. So once you're all finished, kind of cleaning it up. And again, I could work on this for hours and hours and hours and hours, just like my sample I did last night. It took me three hours. <laughs> to make it as perfect as I wanted it to be. Um, just kind of keep smoothing and pressing, smoothing and pressing and getting that shape. Um, think about the design you want to put in the uh, middle. For my first one that I did yesterday is I just added small balls of clay and slipped and scored them on. So then they are all attached to this. So when it glazes, this is going to pull some texture um, on the bottom of the piece. Glaze loves texture. Um, also, another super helpful hint, please write your name and the date on the bottom. I didn't write the date. Today is 5-21-20. So make sure that you're writing the date on the bottom of your pieces as well. Um, that's just gonna be very helpful for us when um, you drop them off and we know whose is whose. All right, so this is my first example. Again, if you kind of saw this one versus this one, again, this is a much more perfected, so I'm going to keep working on this after after I leave you guys. Um, but a couple things. When you drop them off, make sure that you wrap them in plastic. So this is already wrapped in plastic, so you can just take this and wrap it up. All right, a few uh, things just to kind of tell you guys about the projects. Um, each project is $35, and you can choose your glaze color um, from orange, yellow, apple, green, a sapphire, pink, and grape. Um, you must return. You can return to glaze for $15 uh, once these are restricted, but we will be dipping your pieces in glaze. Um, please let us know if you're going to drop off your projects and allow three weeks for firing. We will not email you um, when they are ready, but we will let you know a ready by date. Um, I will be posting new projects in the coming weeks and days um, straight from my kitchen. I took off all the magnets so it wasn't distraction behind you, behind me. Um, keep in mind also, once you start working with the clay, you will have limited time to rework it. So just make sure it's wrapped in plastic when you're not using it. Um, do not put these projects in the oven and do not paint them at home. Your projects must return to Mud Clay Studio to be fired in our kilns and will be food saved after it's fired. So if you want to keep this as a something that's going to be for entertaining once we're allowed to be around people, just uh, keep that in mind too. Um, all clay washes off your clothes, your hands, your hair. I have some right there uh, on my chest. Um, so keep that in mind too. It'll wash out of everything. Um, put your creations on social media platform using hashtag MudClayStudioNJ and you will also be entered to receive a raffle to win a free walk-in hand building session. Um, keep creating things. Keep checking out my videos. I'll be posting them like I said. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email us at the studio. All right. Have a great day.